So here's the current look of the Silver Fox EG33 Impreza. This car has been running naturally aspirated for the last two months. With about a thousand miles on the clock, it's been running the stock SVX ECU, and now I'm ready to change it up a bit. So here we are at the start of chapter two for the Silver Fox build. Before our goals were to just make this chassis go down the road, also prove out a fresh engine build, and make sure everything was in order. So now we set our sights on boosting this thing. That's going to require aftermarket ECU support, and that's exactly what today's video is all about. So the next thing that I started to work on was actually integrating the new ECU into the car. Now that I have the ECU soldered all up, I've actually been able to test it out. I now need to start working on integrating it into the chassis. So I'll just give you one last look at it here. Here is the Mega Sport 3 that I assembled myself. And uh, on this side you can see the actual MS3 has its connector down here. And this on top is the MS3X expansion board. And along with both of those, inside of here I do have the dual VR board for running the cam and crank trigger through. As reported on some of the forums, um, the signal can be a little bit too noisy for the Mega Squirt. So I went ahead as the Mega Squirt EG33 forefathers have uh, assured me it should work. So. So this is the current state of the interior. I haven't really put anything back together in here yet. Obviously that's because I am going to put the aftermarket ECU in. But under here, kind of shoddily, the current ECU is in place. And so just kind of had it zip tied there. But you can see I do have the connectors for the MS3 and the MS3X and as well as a big mess of wiring. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and start connecting some more of the wires from the chassis to the Mega Squirt harnesses. Now I'm unwrapping the main wiring harness that goes to the ECU. I'm going to run all the remaining wires to the Mega Square 3 harness. I'm getting the stock SVX ECU out of the way, that way I can do a cleaner install of the MS3 harness. Once I connect the new EC to the car, I can turn the key on and see if it actually powers up, and then attempt to connect my laptop. Once I did finally turn the key, it was nice to see that a lot of the things we had already wired up just worked. There's still a long ways to go though. Last night I had a bunch of automotive minded friends over and uh, had a little gathering. Kind of like a party to see if we can get this thing running. And we spent a lot of time um, looking at the wiring, spent a lot of time going through the software, making sure all the settings were correct. And uh, luckily, um, all of them essentially have tuned cars before, so that's a big benefit, something I'm not, I'm not familiar with and I've not done before, so learning that process. But we did have some problems with actually getting signal for ignition out of the car. So we spent a long time debugging the wiring from the ECU and debugging the wiring into the car. 
um, or into the engine bay rather, to figure out what was going on with the coils. So we had a theory that maybe the SVX coils required 12 volt and the ECU was only doing logic level 5 volt. So we decided to switch to LS2 coils, which my friend just had laying around for his Corvette. So he kindly brought those over and we wired up all the LS2 coils. And from there, we still did not get any signal coming out of the ECU to the coils. So that led me to start taking apart the ECU and look it over. And uh, probably not long into that, I noticed that I actually had the ribbon cable for the MS3X backwards so all the signals were going somewhere else <laughs> who knows where but not to the right place so once we finally turned that around um, and uh, a lot of wiring up of those um, LS2 coils we actually did get this thing to fire up last night which was a, a win so pretty pumped about that um, here's the here's the video showing you what happened It tried to run. Yeah, yeah. Things there. We burned a non-zero amount of gasoline. Do it some more. Oh, hell yeah. So beyond that, I'll just give you a little bit of a tour of uh, what's going on with the car right now. So, here you can see these are the six SVX coils just hanging out because they currently are not on the car. As I said, we've wired up some LS2 coil packs and they're just running with uh, wires to the plugs. Got that on both sides. Right now, just some wiring kind of hanging out um, to just kind of prove the theory. So we'll spend some time cleaning all that up. And then uh, here you can actually see the bottom is the uh, cam. No, I'm lying. The bottom is the crank signal, with the 12 tooth, and the top is the cam signal. So then I actually do have. Uh, the ECU down here. Like I said, I did take it apart. It just fired up and still in its taken apart state. I'm going to do uh, a couple of improvements to it, but <clears throat> beyond that, we've got a lot of the uh, um, original harness still sitting here. I'm probably going to try to clean this up quite a bit in the near future, but just to get it fired up, this is what we were looking at, which is just looks like a big mess of wires, really. Kind of frightening if you don't know what you're looking at, but Believe me when I say that I've looked at this enough that if you just pull the wire out and ask me what it was, I could tell you. So that's that. It's a long way to go, I suppose, from just uh, just getting it to fire up to actually make it run. The next things that I gotta do is worry about the idle air control valve. So with the one that comes on the SVX, it's kind of weird. It's pulse width modulated, but it's kind of a push-pull type system. And I don't exactly have all the electronics sitting around to wire that up. In fact, I would require probably one of my friends to help me out wire, wiring that up because I'm not that comfortable. Um, however, the other plan could be to use some sort of GM um, idle air control valve and get that to work because I know that I currently have the pulse with modulated uh, circuitry wired up in the ECU so if there was a sensor or uh, if there was a controller that I could just plug and play with that that might be worth uh, spending the time to try to integrate it into the car. We'll see what uh, what direction I go but the next step for me is obviously going to be cleaning up a lot of that wiring that you saw 
I'm going to be making some rails for those LS2 coils. Make sure that those things um, can live in a safe place in the engine bay. And from there, I'm just going to be working with uh, tuning the car. So right now, with a little bit of uh, a little bit of throttle, the car will actually idle. Um, even without the idle air control valve, obviously that's why you need to give it a little bit of throttle. But yeah. I'm going to try to verify the timing is the, another next step, so it's a little bit complicated because I don't have any timing marks, marks on my crank pulley, but I think uh, we can make that happen, so yeah, that's the latest with the car, we're making good progress, you know, once we get this um, ECU figured out, that's going to unlock all the possibilities for this car, so really excited about that, and I hope you guys stay tuned. A big thanks to Jordan, Jake, and Dan for volunteering a whole day of their holiday weekend to help me work on this hunk of junk. It hasn't been easy. Easy on cars. What is it saying about? It's not losing any sink. It looks it's rock solid. It sounds funky. It does sound wrong.